Hello, hello, welcome back in. We are getting ready for the semifinals of Bay State College and Converse University game number two, the first game. Bay State looked really hot after that one, Alk. Yeah, it was so dominant. Again, 32 to 14 is the final score line, and Bay State just never looked like they were out of control of that game. They were constantly pushing their lead and just taking Converse all the way on the map, basically. I mean, right there, Bay State putting up a good performance, making it so that we got to start really thinking if they're going to be the team facing off against St. Thomas or if Converse have a way to battle back going into the second game, if they have a draft that they can catch off guard Bay State. I think it starts here, right? Like if Bay State win a second one, a lot of people are going to start saying, it looks difficult for Converse to come back. They already had some adaptations, and this is Converse now choosing their own side. It isn't just losing to side selection uh, to the higher seed. It is they chose red. They wanted to play on red side this game. They've done it all time, all the time while they're here in C Lol Top Eight. Well, it makes me think that they gotta have some kind of strategy Something. hidden up their sleeve. This is the exact same start of the draft, right? Like same bands coming out from Bay State and from Converse, Ooh. but finally Wukong. So Bay State will have to play with a different jungler than we've seen them throughout their quarterfinals run. But that does leave the Kindred open and it's Dragonman Kim stepping in back here in yeah. the main roster with everybody else. A very solid jungler, but also Gwen for Bejani. Yep, there it is. All right, well, we just get to see Gwen again. Some good Gwen enjoyers. Gwen is immune. Again. Yep. Gwen is immune. It definitely was immune last game. Uh, to Panther's efforts, anyway. Well, see, this is... I Honestly, if I'm, I know it's not a good matchup, but honestly, I think Panther just lo you lock in the Renekton here. Really? I it just be, I want to see him on comfort. Uh, I want to see him on something that we know he can pilot really well. Sure. Play aggressively, level one, level two, right into that Gwen. Sure, and if you're going to stay with the Volley Bear, I think a Volley Bear uh, Renekton would definitely help you out there. But instead, Converse... Sticking to the same thing, Volley Bear Ezreal in the start of the game, not really taking our side of uh, some of the advice that maybe the desk was giving, which mm -hmm. was, if you're on red side, give Scary Jerry counter pick. Right. Doesn't seem like that's the case. They want to try and lock this Ezreal away from soft the Yeah, so no Zareth going to be played for them. Not going to see that flexibility of the mages. You can't, we're not really sure what they'll pair up rocks with. If it's going to be that Nautilus or Leona grabbed early into mm -hmm. the game, something that does feel like they were lacking. The Braum wasn't necessarily bad, but it felt like they lacked an engage tool because they wanted to play so aggressively right out of the gates in that bot lane. Yeah, exactly. I think they there's a bit of a mismatch in identity and what actually happened in the game, right? You're thinking, okay, Ezreal Braum, pretty safe, but you look at Scary Jerry and what Rocks want to do, they're playing for that 2v2. Okay. And finally, again, we get a difference in what's happening. They get, yet again, Tristana for someone like Sophus Sage, and now they've got Dragonman Kimsley Sid. Man, that's going to be dangerous to face off against. Sure. It's one of those champions that, I mean, we've seen him pilot many champions very well, but <laughs> Lee Sin is one of those classic champions. It's just... It's kind of like Thresh, right? Like almost eternally very good. Always yep. has a place in the meta at some point or another. Um, I like this part of the, the game for someone like uh, Bay State. You have some clear win conditions. You have someone, again, talking about early lead generation. Mm -hmm. Lee Sin is your man to do that. As we get into the second part of Band, we all also see the bot lane formed for Scary Jerry and Rocks. The Renata Glosk. Not going to be banned away this time. Instead, they're focused on the solo lanes. Okay. They're not, not getting Zoe. I would have to imagine the Ari ban, too. Exactly. I think Zoe's next. But it's not. And now, okay, we see Zara. So prepping for... I wonder what prep, uh, what matchup they're trying to prep for here by getting rid of Saranok. Are they just trying to force him onto the Ari and maybe try to do something else, not necessarily the Vagar? That's what I'm looking for from Converse. I'm also wondering if... We're just going to see something a little bit different from Converse like Good. this. Just grab the Ari for themselves. Ban all of his champions and then go for the oh, Ari. Whoa, whoa, whoa. saranox has got a lot of champions. Sure, to and there's the Lissandra. Yeah. I was, I, I mean, this is, I think, a much better answer. I would have actually just traded, if I'm Converse, trade the Lissandra for the Zareth ban. Because Zareth, yes, he has super high range, but he's very, very stationary. And when you have someone like Ari who can threaten that kind of positioning, that's maybe a little bit Ooh. of a better matchup here. And now Bay State, it feels like they always have a consistent core of the champions just because they don't get banned most of the time. And they're able to kind of change pieces here and there. Then Panther sticks to the Fiora matchup into Gwen. Didn't do so well in that previous game, but maybe learned a lot from facing off against Bajani's Gwen. Understands the matchup just that much more. 
definitely comfort yet again comfort is king for for people like converse you have again coach jad on this volley bear we've talked about it already but rocks on this renata definitely a much different look and i'm looking for what they're gonna be able to do with the handshake because it is somewhat of a disengaged tool it can stop someone like pike from going in it can also stop uh someone like the lee sin from being able to find and engage mm -hmm. and looking at dragon man on this lee sin as well a nice early game champion looks for the early game plays. Mm -hmm. Alessandra is great to follow that up as well. Plus, they still have resets in the comp from the bot lane, which begs the question for Converse University. Looking over to them on the other side, while they have the resets there, sure, for Ari, but they still, it feels like they still need to survive that early game onslaught that is going to be thrown at them by base date. I think the thing that we're looking at is, uh, yet again, can Scary Jerry actually find the poke? Because the way that resets work, obviously, is you need damage to supplement that. There needs someone to go down, and it is going to be on someone like Scary Jerry to whittle away those HP bars. But we saw last game that Scary Jerry and Rox are going to just fight level one anyways. Yeah, that's <laughs> so true. I imagine they did the same here. Yeah, and you have Renata, who her passive auto attacks are really dangerous. So mm -hmm. I think it is a much, a much more aggressive bottom lane pair and can definitely play more into that style. As we load up onto the rift, it is game number two. It is a best of five. Base 8 got the better of Converse University in that first game. But we see a lot of elements changed up and a lot of elements that have stayed the same for both sides, especially being side selection with Converse remaining on that red. As much as things change, things stay the same. So for right now, we're just going to be watching uh, not an explosive level one where no one's going to get caught out on a ward. Panther and uh, Bajani are going to say hi to each other. Go Chad is going to check out on the uh, river dot bush and see, hey, maybe there's dragon min here sitting in the bush. But for the most part, again, this is another game where Ooh. I'm watching for dragon min and what he's going to be able to do. Well, he's Level looking one. to join up Bajani early. Gets Panther to try to dash away, even though Coach Jan scares off the remaining members from invading his own jungle. It is a big trade that now allows Dragon Men to kind of know where he can play more aggressively and maybe even look to see if he can power clear and force a fight around the bat uh, bot scuttle. I was going to say, actually, I think this actually opens up a, a pretty interesting path here for someone like Dragon Men. They did see the ward go into Tribush, and if they're tracking that, they should know Panther will not have vision if he goes for either a lane gank or through the river. So at that point, it becomes incredibly dangerous for someone like Panther to step up. That's true. Nice bone skewer on a rock. Not they again. thought they were being cheeky, but you can't fall for it twice in a row. Wait. But somehow rocks don't survive. And Scary Jerry fighting in the middle of everybody picks up first blood and looks for Swamp Blue and they turn it around. It's a level one, but it goes backwards this time for base state. Last time it was found on the rocks and now a double kill or two kills. Sorry for Converse's bot lane. Barely, just what was so double-digit health there <laughs> for Rocks. Rocks falls. It is not going to be a fight for Scary Jerry. He would have to bail out immediately, but he was in the thick of it all. Truly a Spartan on that side, never giving up. Oh man! All right, well, much better early start here for Converse as well, Radar. Radar gotta be got careful. Yeah, that yeah. was a bad trade there. It has been kind of the bread and butter, I think, for Saranok. We've been talking about it time and time again. His laning phase and just laning phase in general. And now, this is where I think uh, Converse, they were very confident in this one. Maybe overly so, just of how much was invested. When you get seen by... The, look at that. Look how low Rox is. Oh my god, Rox just barely. No flash. The cleanse is there. And it's just so many minions that are all slamming into Softest Sage there. Mm -hmm. I think that's the advantage that Converse ended up going for. And we go back what? to bot lane. They do not stop. It is another early kill for Scary Jerry and Sword Blue. Only level one still will be a sacrifice to the god of bot lane, Scary Jerry. Scary Jerry runs Collegiate at this point. No, like, I mean, you're looking at base state. They're just getting run over. They're still level one. Both of them, 0-4 at the level beginning of the game. They're only level two on the other side. Yeah, but Scary Jerry, they're going to be able to slam a massive wave under this turret. There is so much gold that is missing. 2,000 is the gold that base state were holding on for the first eight minutes of the game. And now that is in favor of Converse. And this is how you make up for the early game deficit. But you Just had play last better. time. Just play you better. Play forehead. better in the bot land. Forehead. <laughs> you get Scary Jerry three kills right out of the gate. I want to see, or I really want to praise Coach Jad on this. They did it's have vision of this and finally we see some action from this volley bear early on he makes it happen they get so much damage on the sage and in the meantime i mean 
they've made action happen on a different on this bot lane now twice while Dragonman is farming. Well, and I like that you had brought up that they were both level one because we saw that it was the charge that had been leveled up yep. by Office Sage, not the rocket jump. So it's an easy target to immediately pinpoint. Can't really get away from it. As soon as any crowd control lands, he's done so. He has no summoner spells as well from the early game. Oh, Good Panther. job from Panther, Pan or from Bajani. Yeah, I was about to say, Bajani saw him on a ward. Panther was just being greedy. Panther was like, I really hope this isn't warded. I hope this isn't warded. Uh, Gwen Q, nice. All right, well, I like mean, I'm not even recalling. if it's not warded, you would expect Bajani to go for a play like that. Just simply try to stop any recalls, even if blind. Yeah, and look at this. I wonder if Coach Chat is going to cancel his recall again. Just I think look at where should. the wave is. Yeah, yeah there Once it is. Once you see that sword blue is that far up, you would definitely cancel that. You look for the charge, but Rocket Jump was available. They've got a lot of damage on a sword blue, even with the bone skewer and now the explosive charge damage. Uh, that's a Coach kill. Chad, the shield just in time from Rocks. Maybe if this lane was just a little more even, Sophus Sage could have found a kill there, but like you were saying, the shielding. And just look at this, like, Trisana can never freeze thanks to her explosive charge. He's trying to cancel this recall. I no. love that Scary yeah. Jerry is just arcane shifting forward. This lane is absolutely doomed for base state. And so now they need to look elsewhere. They need to look for, to Saranoth, Bajani, Dragon Min to carry them out of this gold deficit. Well, see, this is where we turn our attention. Coach Jad has done what you wanted from the first game. Yep. He has played aggressively. That is now two plays that he's been able to make work successfully. Dragon Min, on the other hand, someone we'd expect for these early game plays, someone who usually is that aggressive early on, has more just been power farming it up looking for an angle but just not having one it's the difference of game one and game two volley bear at this point right like he has finally made the play happen he's made them actually work where otherwise base state last game they were able to completely screen him away and he was just all right well i guess i'm backing i guess i'm gonna go back to farming and all the while base state were still winning so look at this again playing on the wave saranok trying to find a roam but i like that from coach jen Answers, yeah. gets a lot of damage, and now Radar, even if he's only level 5, can look for a charm, gets a bit of damage. Though so he's not reading where the pathing would have been properly. Look at top side gotta, of the yeah, picture. picture. Top lane, because that was the grand challenge laid out. Just barely he was able to get the experience lead to force Bajani back underneath the turret. And since the plays are going positive all around the map for Converse, it nets them that first dragon. That right there, I think, is really good, solid communication that we can see coming out from Converse and their bot lane. They're saying, look, this is a massive wave of minions that we have coming down to bot lane let's try to look for something whether it means a dragon or a gank let's get some action going and bajani wave panther he's got ignite taking flashed away but the needle work barely repulsed it in time because enough damage would have been laid out so we have to turn our attention he's to dead the bot again lane, dragon men gets caught out by coach jad they've got enough damage to force out the rocket jump from sofa sage with four members nearby I'm wondering if Converse would have quit. Dragon Man the kick. Not in time. Saranok on the other side. Flash Jin to look for the Frozen Tomb. That's but one. It's only going to be the death of Dragon Min instead in the Flash of Sophus Sage. They can't do anything. I mean, Saranok just doesn't have enough damage. His bot lane doesn't have enough damage. Dragon Min is not level six to go for the Dragon's Rage kick. And Converse are just completely blasting Bay State at this point. You turn nameplates off. I would have thought this is game two for Bay State. Well, and it's funny, too, because you have experience leads on the other side. It is still Saranok and Bajani who have those leads over their solo lane opponents. But look at Sophus Sage and Sword Blue. Exactly. They are level four. Coach Chad is above them. The junglers are above them. Oh, my God, Scary Jerry. What the hell? Let's go, Scary Jerry, man. This guy has been pumping up DPS numbers. He has been the reason why Converse are here in top four, and he's making good on the promise of wanting to make finals for his team. Four. Zero and three. We're not even eight minutes into this damn game. We wanted to see if Converse could bounce back after a slaughterhouse of a game. And so far, it's looking exactly like that. Eight minutes in, Coach Chad is matching the gank. Has to. Panther is so low, he's an easy target for a dive. Even if Dragon Min is only level five, how easy would that be for the side of Fajani and Dragon Min to dive a low health Fiora? And I like this coming out from Converse, recognizing, hey, one of the win conditions or ways for basic to get back is utilizing the Rift Tail. So now they've moved rocks. Ezreal's on his way here. And let's see if Converse can actually contest for this. Down to 25% health. Coach Jack gets himself in the pit with a control ward to make sure there's no wards to be tp to The flash away from Dragon Min, but Bishani is on the other side. It is going to be the smite secure, I think, for the side got it. of Converse. They got it. And they've got the kills as well. Two more. Give the unstoppable Scary Jerry some more credit. It's 9 to 0 for Converse. They've now picked up the Rift Herald, the Dragon as well. 
no kills, no mistakes coming out from Converse in this second game, at where Rox, you didn't even need the actual bailout program. His team is fully funded for this. And this is, as you had called out, Dimitri, the complete turn of get, like fates for each yes. side. The name plates, if they were turned off, I would believe the same thing as you, that it was actually Converse on the blue side after that game one performance. But here, the bounce back from this team, the Peach Belt, here to win Collegiate, to usurp everybody's predictions and make sure they are going to be the top team. They've already ruined that. And let's take a look at this Rift Herald here. Now notice, Soften Sage is nowhere near this fight. Um, it's going to be a 4v4. And because you're already down, because they brought the Ezreal, this fight is lost. There's no Lissandra ult either. So I think at this point, Bay State, they were getting a little desperate. They're saying, look, we need to make this play to at least stay relevant in this. And thank you, Cubby, for this one. Scary, it's Jerry. Appropriate. It's, a, it's it, appropriate. Yeah, it feels about right. So Dragon about a minute. They still have Rift Herald in the side of Converse. This should just be their Dragon. Base State need to be looking to play for that third Drake. Let's play for about 15, 16 minutes. Finish some of our first items, and maybe we have a chance of punching in. But like I do for every team that's behind, we have to roll back the tape and look at how Bay State can possibly get back into this game. It's only a 3,000 gold lead, sure. It is already at 10 minutes into the game, but Converse had the same thing happen to them last time around, and looking at how Saranok, especially on this Lissandra, is playing aggressively on a radar to pick up a kill for Dragonman, is that the way they get back into this game? That's where I was looking for it. Saranok has not died this game, and now he has an assist in his back pocket. We are looking to the solo laners of Bay State to carry them and put them back out onto the map for this game. Ten and a half minutes in, they're going to summon the Rift Herald, get themselves a full that turret finally. too. Yep, they're going to escort it in. It shouldn't take this turret thanks to the bot lane being here, but look at what Bay State's mid jungle are doing they're attacking in the mid lane they're trying they to get have, that down i think you have to and top lane there's a bit of a fight between panther and bajani as well it's going to be the grand Healing. challenge laid down the heel with ignite it's not enough to help out panther and look at bajani he's got the silver snip snip cuts down exactly i i didn't think that this matchup was quite over like we saw bajani even down a kill is able to find that kill onto panther takes him down and it gives them control of the entire top side of the map at this point you see dragon mid has been just hitting up all three quadrants when he's able to. He's now taken all the red buff and now the Krugs, and they should be able to score a couple of plates on this top side while Converse go for second dragon. Second dragon of the game, good tool for the side of Converse, and looking at the soul potential, it will be that cloud soul that will be on the line. Okay, so not necessarily a soul that Converse could use as a win condition. Good bait from oh, Bajani. Come on, you gotta have learned your lesson here. You had to flash back towards your turret, but they can just dive you so easily. He had to have known it was a desperate flash and TP attempts nice Saranok. charm from uh, Radar there. He did it. We, we, we're, we're making it back after game one. The floods of game one are coming off. The jitters, everybody's like, okay, we're warmed up. We're ready to go. Converse pick up another kill. They're gonna continue to get plates, but Bay State still funneling gold into this Gwen. Will be able to pick up this turret either on this wave or the next. This is where, for the side of Converse, they gotta somehow stop this win. They gotta slow yeah. down the gravy train because you look at the gold difference, of course, we gotta look at Scary Jerry, how exactly. much gold is on that Ezreal, but this Gwen is going to be a problem. Yeah, I was gonna say, so take a look at the difference right now. It is the carries for these two teams. 5,300 gold for Majani, 7,000 for Scary Jerry. But Johnny's got a lot of weight on his shoulder, someone that we don't typically tend to see as the carry for this team when you look across uh, all of the names, but is going to need to step up in this case if he wants to help his team get into a second game win. But the big thing is that Rift Maker being completed yep. for Bajani. That is a huge power spike for Gwen, regardless of how fed or not fed you are. Gwen's could always bounce back once you get that item in your inventory. It gives a lot of healing, gives a lot of survivability. The true damage is obviously nice as well. Once he finishes his second item, that's where I'm really looking for Bajani to kind of step up and be a huge threat. He needs to find a flank. One-on-one, face-to-face, long-range fights versus Ezreal, you are going to lose nine times out of ten. Bajani needs to come into a flank position, and that's where I look to someone like Swordblue and Dragonman to really start to kind of pair up together and put down Vision so we can see those flank teleports. But it's still worrying. It's a worrying trend for the side of base team. Mm -hmm. The fact that their bot lane is so far behind. A bot lane that kind of needs to snowball out of control, especially when you have a pike on your team. Gotta get these early kills. Otherwise, you find states like Sword Blue does. You find yourself 0 4, 
struggling to find that foothold on the map and really having to be reliant on the other members of your team if you even want to hope to get back in. So it does change some of their roles as Radar is going to have a bit of trouble holding down Bajani. He still had Spirit Rush. Role. Exactly. Uh, Sophus H still can hold down the wave and they're going to be scary here. Saranog. Okay, that's a lot of damage Fail. on the Jet, but look at the hostile takeover. Saranog forced to use Frozen Doom on himself, but the chase down, the wow. damage from Scary Jerry, peppering these members of Phase State. Oh, Radar's here. Here's the Radar. flash. Where do you come from, buddy? Out of nowhere. He will fall for his sins, but he at least got one with him. Okay, Panther, he teleported top lane, but now he's going to collapse into the mid lane here. They want this turret. They want to try and force this issue. Saranok, he has teleport. He'll be able to join back into this fight. And it seems like everybody is eyeing up this Rift Herald. They want gold. Base State need this to stay in the game. And Converse, they want to push their lead. The Converse are the team with the inside angle at the moment. About to take down the tier one turret mid. A big obstacle in their way. Now allowing them to set up control of the jungle of Base State. And now what I want to from base state in response to this is move away from this rift hill put vision down you already see some of the wards are starting to litter that side of the rift but get vision and get ready for this third drake it is a cloud drake obviously not the most important soul Souls but and soul man exactly it is still going to be as powerful as you want it to be so it's still gold in their back pocket and maybe you can start to look towards objective bounties as they start to come up i'm looking at the moment to see for base state other angles they can get back into this game they are getting a lot of their mythics completed. Yeah. They have even out that state of the game. But when you look at plays like this, right here, it just it looked good at first from base state, but it was just a little too ambitious and a great hostile takeover. I was gonna say, yeah, this ultimate from Rox is exactly why I want to see stuff like this Renata coming out from him. Really good play. And maybe if they're a little bit even more even in gold, this looks like a great, fantastic play. Radar finding that kill onto Pike is awesome, but I think still a little over eager because it does allow <laughs> for Dragon Men to pick up a, a return kill. So now Dragon Men in a great spot, three and two. Not necessarily fed out of his mind, but sure. at least he's made, made himself aware and noticeable on the map. He's going to be a lot of damage for these early stages of the game. A lot has happened in this game, all green, but we're only 16 minutes in. It's been like turbo action at this point. Like right. Nitrous oxide. We're just kicking into high gear. 16 minutes in, like you were saying. And we've got dragons spawning up here. Rift Herald is in the back pocket of Converse. There's a couple of options they can do, but since it's in the eyes of, in, in the hands of Coach Chad, I think they're gonna wait to use this after the dragons for some pressure. Bashani, right there on the flank with the blast. Oh, only wait a minute. Rocks. Coach Chad does have the ult to get away. Hostile but takeover. Another hostile takeover, splitting up the fight. Converse, but they're getting hunted down. They don't have that TP from Panther, so they have to use the ult from Coach Chad to get away. Uh oh, Saranok now is locked in the pit himself. Not gonna be able to connect the charm from Radar, no but they've flash. got that Lissandra. If they want to turn the attention back, going golden to survive with the dragon taken down to 50 Whoa. the dragon doing a lot of damage as well Saranok should fall but with the charm not connecting they might be able to get out of there and Saranok will find himself out nice. the fight secured by dragon men and the damage comes in from Wait. base state Bail. but scary jerry can he fight back enough they've got the damage all over the place the peppering of damage but scary jerry oh my god he fog survived of the fog of war but look at Bajani. he's on the hunt so the sage is on the other side as well does he land some of these mystic shots? He needs the benefit. Oh no, scary! But he went in and scary gets spotted out Wait. by toward the flash and shutdown for Softus. And he's got resets, baby! And there it is, base state. They get a ton of gold. This Rift Herald is gonna get nothing. Panther picks up a turn in the top side. Massive win there for base state to stay relevant in this game too here. And man, it was a comedy of errors. There were a couple of sloppy plays. I'm sure both of them are feeling a little dizzy after that one. But base debt, you say you got a better feeling happy yes. afterwards. Because it was looking pretty dire for them. It still does with how far ahead Scary Jerry is. But the fact they were able to survive this when they should have been caught out is insane. And remember, this starts off with Coach Shad not getting the blast cone. He's not able to get into this. And then look at two different fights here. Radar and Rocks onto Saranok. If they were to find this kill onto this, I don't think base they can ever contest. But Safa Sage is pumping out damage and threatening. And I want eyes on Scary Jerry here. He goes super low. Right here's the hook. Bailout program gets him a kill. It right does, there. And he's able to survive because that bailout resets the fight. And even here, it looks dire because he's so low. Had he not tried to play so aggressively, he could have held on to the shutdown yeah. goal that he had on top of him. And 
Honestly, this could have been saved because they got the turret topside. It's super dangerous. Obviously, not really respecting the timers, right? The death timer. Sword Blue able to come around, get onto a flank. They eventually find the kill. That is a nice reset. It's a lot of gold for Coach Chad in the end. Okay, the Dragon Man gets the kick onto Coach Chad, who jumps right back in. Slam, dunk onto the two members. Make it three members of base state. Saranok, even once he's out of stasis, he's double killed by Radar. And there it is. Even after a good play, Converse, they are not immune. Oh, but nice. the flash charm onto Sophist with the true shot brush barely going wide. It doesn't matter. Converse owns this game. 20 minutes deep now. They'll be able to take this mid-tier two. And Magical, Woo. I think we've got at least four games in the tank as Converse are in commanding hey, lead hey, of this. Hey, the game is not done oh, just my. yet. There's you were the always... biggest Converse fan last game. And now it's switched over to Bay State. Because <laughs> Bay State have ways back in. They've got Gwen, one, one, and five. Bajani is still a big threat for the side of Converse. Even if the inhibitor will fall here in the bot lane, Converse picking that up. They gotta be careful because of the flank. He's going for the flank here. You have Sophus Sage as well. How can Bay State lock them into this corridor? Sophus is still pretty far away. They can turn their attention on to Pajani, which is what they're gonna do with Coach Chad getting the stun and root on top of him. And nice, nice handshake. handshake on the other side to split up the fight for now. Charm dodged away by Serenok, looking for the damage on it to the members in the back line, but Scary Jerry, he's Bail still out. on the bail out. Cannot get back up, he's dead. And this this is that fight I was telling about, Alk. This is where they utilize Wait. this win, but can they fully, with everyone else dead? Bajani, it's you against the world. Dip, dip, damage is not enough. It's Radar's turn to shine. And they break open the inhibitor, and while Scary Jerry falls, he's finally able to rely on his teammates. Radar with the triple kill. I was worried there for them as Base 8 had a monster flank there. The amount of damage and amount of time I think that Bajani was able to hold that flank was really impressive. It was also scary because Scary Jerry had died. Yes. It looked like it was going to be dire because that was the one with most of the gold. But Radar has been showing up in this game. Finally, right after a game one, a very rough one. We're going to take a look at this replay here. I mean... Really good, well, well played beginning here for both Radar and Rocks. That handshake buys time for the back line. And honestly, the fact that Bailout Program is mere moments away from having a reset onto Sword Blue yep. is the reason why it looks so close. And in the picture in picture, as this play kind of wipes out and finishes, there's a Baron on the table. Super important, obviously, for Converse to be able to get that. That'll help them in getting the push, finishing out this game. And Bay State, they do not want that to go over. Those are two and a half minutes that they cannot buy. They're trying their damage to buy that. They're trying their damage to make sure they're, they're not down 6,000 gold. But it was so. a nice use of the dash wave from Scary Jerry to make sure the kick amounted to nothing. They're, they're down like 7,000 gold. Hey, they need to buy some items first Converse before we get a win. further behind than last game. This is true, and they still lost that one. But so. they fought back valiantly. And right now, Converse on top of this Baron. A nice charm Look from radar, radar. But did not get the Everfrost to connect. With TP coming in, looking for that flank from Saranok. But he doesn't have very much banning. He was clearing out the bot lane as best he can. But they're now down to 25% health. They got to keep dragging him in now. Charm's going to connect on a Bajani. That is a nice, nice. take over to make sure they can see her here. And with Saranok by himself in the pit, he is the first. First to fall in the fight as Converse taunt down Bay State. They get everyone. They want it all. And they want to make this a series arc. And there we go. Just hunting down all of the stragglers. Goodbye, Sofa Sage. Maybe you'll get out thanks to the Cloud Rift. But Converse, they're going to game three. Tied up in the series. 9 to 27. Hey, he's just trying to take away some of the minions. I mean, Maybe try to no, pad the some thing of his is, stats. This is great from Coach Jen. He's still laying the back. He's yep. making sure his office isn't going to be there to eat up the minions so the rest of his team can end the game. <laughs> this is just funny. I'm glad observers are showing this. Sorry, Blue is going to watch as his base falls. This may take a little bit longer. Saranok is up. Dragon okay, Min is Dragon coming. Min and same with Pachani. The charge will fall, so they'll have a bit of a scary. Wait a minute, afterwards. scary. They've got the damage, though. Scary, Jerry, so damn scary. So he hunts down and takes game one for his team. He <laughs> would get kicked into the base, but <laughs> does it matter? It is a series tied up at one apiece. Yet again, these games are going lightning quick. 29 minutes, 23 minutes on this one. Converse, they want to put a bow on it and they tie up the series 1-1. One, one. The Peach Belt wants to fight back. What a bounce back, too, because it was quite the loss in yes. that first game for Converse, but they are here to battle and to make sure everybody knows that the Peach Belt has to be respected.
Both of the partner conferences battling out here in the semifinals. Really fun stuff. Bay State look a little lost, especially after their bot lane was not able to get off to a, a nice start. You just saw it completely crumbled. Saranok finally met his match a little bit there in that in, against Radar. Well, Radar still struggled in the lane phase. Sure. But this is where it comes down to the strength we've seen from Converse this entire time. Mm -hmm. Team fights. They are so Agreed. good at team fighting. Even if they had all those skirmishes in the bot lane, it is still the team fights that won them that game. Scary Jerry was able to arcane shift forward, and we couldn't say the same in that last game, right? It was yep. really impressive. So I am now looking... We always talk about, ah, oh, the bounce back, the bounce back. Well, Bay State got a lot of champions we've already seen from them before. Do they change it up, or are we going to continue to see more of the same from them? And while our teams get ready for the next game, it says here in the teleprompter that I'm reading from that we're getting a message from someone called the most ravishing man of darkness. Huh? Huh. Take it away. Welcome back, children. It is Whoa. time to see the most fearsome thing in League of Legends. Let's start off with the first. Uh, uh, I believe we have the Scarecrow. Oh, oh, scary. oh, no. But it's okay. He can't hurt you if you don't look at him. Moving on, we might be able to understand what else constitutes uh, the Headless Horseman. Oh. We took over many of my games once. <laughs> I hate him. Whoa. And finally... One of the most terrifying things in League of Legends is uh, currently upon yes. us. The ah. man of darkness. I know he haunts my nightmare, 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 nightmare. <laughs> ah, truly terrifying, but I've discovered a new pariah. The most terrifying thing of all. It's oh. Gary J. Ah. It's too much. I'm scared. I'm scared <laughs> right now. I'm terrified. I'm shaking my boots, as you can see. Not even Lux can hold my light. Actually, the light's away from me here. <laughs> As y'all already saw, the Scary J Show <laughs> is right upon us, and it seems like the Converse does indeed fit, Max. <laughs> Did you see that tweet also? From Graves, yeah. The, the slipper. Oh, man, I love that. <laughs> scary Jerry! Uh, I'm, I'm joining I'm joining your cult. You're joining here, the Scary Jerry I'm joining. <laughs> yep. Is there a membership Welcome. fee? Like an application? Or like, uh, it's just tiered. It. It's like Patreon. It's like, tier yeah. two? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Tier three is only for the. That's crazy. But you know what? The there's a reason why Scary Jerry is able to do all that. You know what that reason is? The champions he picked, right? We just consider it. And also the stats that he has in front of him. Damage. How he's able to perform. Look, look at this. Look, what are those numbers? I can't even count that high. What do you? What? What, what is this? Actually, uh, actually, 1.6k at uh, eight minutes. Yes, is eight minutes. That's, <laughs> not like like, like, that's like, eight. Like Harold is not even involved at that <laughs> no, point in the good. game. That is just purely off of their two v two. How they're using the the jungler. How they're using mid. I think Scary Jerry and Rocks are performing absolutely admirably. I'm shocked that you can have numbers like this and it's one one. And I mean, bot was 06 at like five minutes. Yeah. Yes. That was. Just <laughs> I went to the bathroom and came back and I was like, guys, the game is over. What happened? Like, <laughs> now, you know what? Let's take a look at how, at, at how the 06 happened. I think we can go ahead and count along the way, just as you run <laughs> through all those highlights. Because, uh, you know, I can just count to six. Because look, all right, start off the exact same dive. And this right here is two in. They get jumped on as yeah. well, right? This they, does not start in their favor by any means, but very good exhaust, very good situation after the fact. I think the Renata E afterwards comes in incredibly clutch in order to help Scary Jerry live. I do, um, yeah. I do want to give credit. Jerry is awesome. One person I was very impressed with for the rest of the team, they yeah. this too, was Radar. Going yes. against ASU, one of the biggest reasons that we were kind of nervous going uh, going into the series and going into the tournament as a whole was Radar did not look that good into ASU in, in earlier rounds. This game against Saranok, who we have been hyping up, Smacks especially, mm -hmm. about how good Saranok is, he held his own, and I think his KDA at the end of this game was like 8, 2, and 13. Very yeah. impressive from him as well. Yeah, I think taking the Ari away was like a great Massive. first step, right? Yeah. And being able to force their force uh, Bay State's hand and be like, okay, Saranok, what do you play into this? Is it the Lissandra? Is it the Zoe? Is it some other weirder pick? We've seen the Vigar kind of come out yep. throughout the day. Uh, and I just don't think uh, Saranok's choice, even though it, was, it seemed good enough, I think he got outranged really easily. And we can look back at the start of the day and just say like, hey, Converse wants to outrange you. You pick a champ like Lissandra, you better have something to help you go in to cover that range because otherwise you're just gonna get poked down. You have to ult yourself. We were talking when we were watching this game 
You, Converse, like the Ezreal, right? You didn't have a lot of ways to deal with it, and one of the only ways was Lissandra. And in multiple fights, Lissandra was forced to self-ult. Yes. And if Lissandra is self-ulting, how are you getting onto Jerry? Maybe it's like this, where he flashes into you, <laughs> and then you're able <laughs> to punch He doesn't see it. the pike. Yeah, yeah he exactly. doesn't see it. But yeah, yeah. overall, like, absolutely wonderfully played from Converse. The draft enabled Jerry, and the rest of the team, other coach Jad, also did much better yes. on Bola Bear yes. this time. Not huge 07. Huge early Huge improvement. Back. Yes. And now with Bay State going into the next game, they've decided to try to keep things a bit more consistent in their favor as they're sticking for that blue side here, Smacks. Does that change anything or do you think, well, realistically, what do they need to really come out on top after this? They need to not go for these bot lane 2v2s if it's gonna be this <laughs> volatile, I think. Like, I, I'm a pike enjoyer myself, but it's, it's it's not all that fun to come into this best of five, the semifinals for the college championship, and just 50-50 it off of the first level one. <laughs> We're at a best of three now. True. Going back to game one, Bay State looked very good and Converse did not mm -hmm. look that good. Converse still needs to make adjustments for them to cleanly close out the rest of the series yeah. if they want to maybe 3-1, probably a 3-2 at this point. Yeah. The biggest thing for Converse, I think, is this top lane matchup is not working. This Gwen is dominating you in the side lane, the Fiora counter pick isn't working. You need to try something else. Mm. Any any Gwen banners? Anyone? <laughs> I, I, anyone I, do agree, yeah. I do agree with that. I think that's when a good idea. What is immune? I do when agree with that. And if I'm base state as well, I think the thing I'm looking for is, of course, getting Scary Jerry off the Ezreal. That's like the most obvious yeah. thing. But I think even further than that, Ari has shown herself to be an actually very important pick in this series, more so mm -hmm. than the junglers. You look at Wukong. It's probably not going to be contested. Maybe it's probably banned mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. right? You see Coach Shad uh, going for the Vola Bear. There are plenty of picks into Vola Bear that you could be pretty comfortable dropping into the second phase. But getting Saranok on that Ari, getting Radar off that Ari, I think is going to be paramount to the rest of the series. And as we head on forward, Scary Jerry continues his reign of terror. But we'll have to see if Bay State can bite back in game three. <laughs> I want y'all to get hype. Get scared. Get scared. <laughs> oh, it's not oh. getting. Oh, no. He's coming for Three. us. Are you ready? No, you're not. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll see you after this break. <laughs>